What's up, guys? I'm sitting here with E.K. Johnston, the author of the book Ahsoka. And I would like to start by just, I'm, I'm sure you've said this before. I think I've actually heard you talk about it, but I find that you or people don't mind retelling the story. What was your reaction when you found out that you're going to get to write for Star Wars and write for Ahsoka? Um, I was very excited, obviously. My agent had called, um, and he has this wonderful habit of burying the lead. So he talked for like 10 minutes about problems he was having with his email system, and then said, oh, and by the way, they want you to write a book. Uh, the character is called A-H-S, oh, at which point I completely lost my mind. And there was some high-pitched shrieking involved, and then he was like, so you're in? And I was like, yes. What is it like when you get to start the story and you, you get to kind of sprinkle in uh, aspects of season seven that they had already created, but we never got to see? How was it to kind of write your take on the Siege of Mandalore, for example? Uh, that part was super exciting um, and, and really intimidating because it's not something that anyone has ever seen. And so much of Star Wars, Clone Wars, and Rebels, both of them, they were so beautiful. And then I was like, I have to write this and no one knows what it looks like. Um, so they were super helpful in terms of giving me a structure for how to do it. So it's kind of a scaled down version of the Siege of Mandalore. Um, but I got to write like the big moment at the end, I guess, which was, which was exciting. Right. Um, how about the process of just how Ahsoka got her white blades and all of the, this was the first time we'd ever heard of bleeding a lightsaber crystal. Did Lucasfilm help you with that or did they just say, explain how she got the white blades and just let you handle that? Um, it was always going to be part of the book. It was always kind of like the emotional climax of the book was, was turning them on for the first time. Um, but they gave me, they gave me the like vocabulary and then they were like do it <laughs> and I was like oh god because it turns out it's really difficult to write lightsaber fights like they look really beautiful but then when you write it it's like Ahsoka wiggled her fingers like Morpheus in the Matrix um which which gets awkward really fast so I practiced a lot by writing out that scene from Rebels where she turns off the seventh sister's lightsaber and um, then I got to write a lightsaber fight in which only one of them has a lightsaber. And that was also difficult, but super fun. In the Star Wars show, you mentioned that there were three Canadian Easter eggs. And one of them is the board game. And you said that the other two hadn't been found. Have they been found yet? They have, actually. Uh, a Star Wars um, kids... Twitter account. I'm sorry, I'm not getting the name right, but they're they're like a library or children's book Star Wars account. Um, found one of them. It's the Besca, which is the Athabasca River in Alberta. And then one of my friends from um, a very long time ago uh, picked the Toronto Blue Jay, whose character uh, who has a character named after him in the book. You might not be allowed to answer this just because you might be more informed than we are, and that's totally fine if okay. you can't but I just wanted to get your take on what's happening in Star Wars Rebels and Ahsoka lives, or does she, or uh, what's your opinion? Um, it was actually kind of a challenge to write the outline for the book because they didn't tell me anything about season two of Rebels. So when I saw the finale, it was a total surprise. And I, I was terrified that she's going to die. And then I cried for like two hours like because it was so emotional. <laughs> the music was amazing. The animation was amazing. Like It was just... Like, and you just knew it was coming. Like, as soon as Vader shows up standing on that TIE fighter, and you're like, you are so extra, but also I'm just going to cry for, like, ever now. Um, and then two hours after that, the book announcement went live, and I had, like, the strangest day of my entire life. Um, but yeah, they didn't really tell me very much, um, and by very much I mean anything. Like, there was a couple of times where I had written... Um, I had sent in the outline, and then, as a reward, I got to watch this week's episode of Rebels because I was done my work and then I would email my editor and be like just saw this week's episode changing the outline and it wasn't like big stuff but I wanted to make sure that she wasn't hitting the same character beats as Kanan because they have sort of that similar Jedi alone story and I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't giving her the same like and then this happens and then this happens to Ahsoka too and then this happens to Kanan and then the same thing happens to Ahsoka so I was very sort of conscious of that as we were going through. That's something I hadn't ever considered. Is there anything that you can remember, like something that Kanan did that you were like, well, can't can't do that now? 
oh my goodness, that we went through several outlines and honestly I don't remember all of them. Um, but there was a couple of um, there was there was a couple of moments where she, it was a conversation she was having with Caden in the book or Miara in the book, and it was very similar to a conversation that Kanan was having with Ezra um, or Hera in some cases about like the past and the future and destiny and all that kind of shenanigans. So we had to go back and be like, and not so much. <laughs> Um, I know that you can't tell us what story you're writing in a certain point of view, but I'm, I loved those old, like, Tales from Jabba's Palace anthology storybooks. So just what's it like? How's it different to write a short story about a background character instead of a, a novel about a major character? Um, it was challenging because there was a very definite framework you have the beginning of your scene and you have the end of your scene and then you have to sort of make a story out of something that is quite short in a lot of cases. Um, but it was fun to sort of really dig into what's going on in the background of Star Wars scenes because there's always something like amazing going on in the background of a Star Wars scene. Like even if, it, even if they're sitting in the cockpit of the Millennium Falcon, there's always something going on in the background. And it was cool to sort of dig into that a little bit. And kind of along those same lines, just what was it like to go from being a fan of Ahsoka to actually contributing to her story? Um, it's still sort of like really bizarre in a lot of ways. Um, I came to Clone Wars really late because I was afraid that it would make me fall in love with the clones. And then I'd be sad, which is, of course, exactly what happened. Um, and then at the end of season five, I was almost relieved because I was like, whew, Anakin's not going to murder her. <laughs> Um, and then, like everyone else, I was like, "Wait, what happened?" Um, and and then the sort of the book thing came together. And at that point, I had missed all of the like early um, online kerfuffle when you know a teenage girl dared to act like a teenage girl in Star Wars. Um, but so I missed all. I feel like I missed all the bad stuff. Really, like I know it existed, but I didn't really experience any of it. And just getting to add to that story and like the number of people who come up and they were like, when we started watching the Clone Wars, we were like, what, a girl? And now we're like, she's the best and we've all grown as people and I really, really like that. So so again, the book is Ahsoka and you can also see her work in a certain point of view coming up. Uh, what else do you have that you'd recommend a Star Wars fan read and how can people keep up with you? Um, if you haven't read Lost Stars by Claudia Gray, that might be... My favorite new canon book, if not, like, the best new canon book. That's the one that if people ask me, what do I start reading it's just, Lost Stars? Yeah, she just absolutely nailed the nostalgia of the original trilogy, but also expanded it in ways I didn't think were physically possible or, like, emotionally possible. Um, I also really, really deeply love Kenobi. Um, like, if I could save one thing in the, in the extended universe, it would be that book. I love that book so much. Um, I actually meant... What of your work oh, would you recommend? Work? Yeah. Oh, well then. But yeah, I mean, good, good Star Wars books. <laughs> good Star Wars books. Um, man, I have a couple of sort of their modern dragon slaying stories that take place in southwestern Ontario, like modern day southwestern Ontario, um, called The Story of Owen and Prairie Fire. Um, and they're both about this dragon slayer who's not um, particularly the dragon slayer archetype <laughs> and the bard who has been employed to make him look cool on the evening news. That sounds cool. And you are on Twitter. What's yeah. your website? or? Um, you can find me on Twitter at EK underscore Johnston um, with a T. And my website is EKJ, no, EKJohnston.ca. You can tell how often I go there. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. And thank you for watching. And may the force be with you.